Welcome back to TacosTheGeeks.com. Justin here, back with more comic book reviews. Today we are going to be reviewing Superman, Son of Kal-El, number three. As always, I give you a brief synopsis, so here we go. Jonathan Kent hasn't been Superman for long, but he's upset some powerful people with his heroism. And the underground news source known as The Truth is helping John open his eyes to evils in the world that can be more powerful than the new Man of Steel. Continuing the brand new saga of Superman from Tom Taylor, the writer of Nightwing, and John Timms, artist of Future State, Superman of Metropolis. And boy, as you can see in those panels right here, we got a lot to discuss, but I'm going to tell you about what I like and obviously what I did not like about this issue. I'm going to say, first of all, that this issue started off with a hell of a bang, man. We go to Coast City and we have this, we get introduced to a villain named Fort Line who creates this earthquake and it's up to Superman and Superboy. For the sake of this story, I'm going to keep calling him Superboy since Clark Kent still is present. And Superboy had to save this uh, building from collapsing. And I had to give credit to art, the artist because John Thames, the art in this panel and the art in these pages in these opening sequence for Fort Line is gorgeous. One thing I absolutely love what they did in this shot and with this whole scenario is that the scenario is that Superman, the building's collapsing and it's tilting over. So Superman's holding it together as John has to go in and rescue 472 people and three pets, I believe. And what they did with the whole sequence when John is in the building is that the panels itself are slanted to show and immerse you into the action right away to give you that perspective like you're actually in there watching this building collapse and the way John is saving these people. I, I love the fact that they made the actual artwork and the actual action, the camera perspective in the panel, the way it's drawn to slant. And I thought that for me reading that, it fully immersed me in the action. I was like, yo, this is fire. Here we go. Yeah, John, go save them. And it was absolutely amazing. And I was really immersed as well with the Fort Line character because it's a very unique uh, ability that Fort Line was able to really just adjust to the planet's density. And it took actually Superman and Superboy to carry her away from the area because Fort Line doesn't know what's going on, what's happening, how she got there with the powers and everything else. So there's a little mystery with it too. And I like the fact that they both had to carry her to keep her in the air. That way she doesn't do any more damage. So they take her to Star Labs. And that's all we see of Fort Line from there. And that's something that I wanted to see more of. I wanted to see more investigation. I wanted the, the focus to be on what we were setting up for. And this is where the book falls flat on its ass for me. And the escapism that was set up gets taken away. Superboy gets a call from Jay, the pink haired activist, of course, and he's protesting. Yeah, that's right. Superboy is protesting about refugees and immigration. Complete action scene. Previous page. Rest of the book, we focus on Jay, refugees, immigrants. I gotta take my glasses off for this one. Because that's how you know I'm getting serious. This is the rent territory right now. This, in my opinion, is what's going on, and this is what's wrong with comic books today. There is absolutely no escapism with the big two, with Marvel and DC. I don't know why this entire refugee plot line was needed. I do not know why Jay, the pink-haired activist, is even necessary in this whole plot right now. Unless Jay is to be revealed to be the mastermind behind all of this, okay, then, th then he has a purpose. If Jay's actually going to be, which it looks like they're setting up for him to be, either have a bromance with John or a romance with John, if he's going to be, John, if Jonathan Kent turns out to be gay, who cares? Okay, fine. I understand you want representation. I prefer you to create original characters, but hey, that's how you want to do it. Lazy writing on my part, lazy writing. What I think it is, I think it's lazy writing. Um, but by all means, go ahead. I don't care about that. 
I do care about is the fact that we stop a plot to make a political statement. That's what I have a problem with. You had something going, like I was just said minutes ago. I was fully immersed with this action sequence, very, uh, fully curious about Fort Line and her powers, and I'm thinking that they're going to do an examination scene in Star Labs, and she's gone completely until the last page of this book. The entire rest of this time is John spending time with this pink-haired activist. Why? Why? One more time. Why? Who is this for? What is the point? I don't get it. How do we go from this? This beautiful, beautiful sequence. Engaging. Superman, Superboy doing superhero shit, superhero things. Keeping me immersed. And then completely take me out of it. To do this. Is this something Superman will do? Yes, it is. I get the point that they're trying to make. Is it necessary at this time with the thing that you just set up? No, it's not. This could have been done later on. This could have been done as a side story, a one shot, whatever. This had no, it, it literally killed the whole establishing fault line for me. And now it's just like, hey, if you want more Fort Line, if you want to know more about that mystery, you got to pick up this next issue. We have to continue this relationship with Jay and John. And people in, in comic book pros wonder why manga is kicking their ass. It's because of shit like this. People, the majority of people, I guarantee you, do not give a damn about politics in their comic books. They just want to see their heroes do hero shit. Is that a hero shit to do? Yes, it is. You have a cause that you're fighting for. You see a superhero cause for it. For it. Yes, John's being a hero. But at the same time, it is a political statement. And if you're going to do a political statement, don't have a biased view. If you're going to make a, 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 a political statement on refugees and immigrants, at least also show the opposing argument. Use a villain for the opposing argument. That way you don't look like you're biased. And for me personally, I don't think politics should be anywhere near these stories anyway. Yes, there have been political stuff in comic books before. I get it. But when you literally stop and put a pin on something that you're trying to establish to focus on this... It's like, why? You just, you, you lost me. It's so random. It feels random. It feels random. Yes, I know Jay is in book one and book two, and we, we kind of established that he's an activist. I get it. I understand it. I'm a writer myself. I know, I know story beats. But for me as a writer, I don't understand why they would include this. Right in the middle. When you're having something, when the mo your, your momentum is so high in the story, your A story is so high right now, and then you just drop your A story to focus on a poorly, poorly developed B story, by the way, and then at the end, you go back and you remember, like, oh, crap, we got we, we to gotta go back to the relationship with Superman and Superboy because we got to get Clark out of here. And then we still have to uh, uh, establish Fort Line, who escapes, and we don't even see that sequence. It's just, it's just expositioned. Did we pick up the organization? Did we pick up Fort Line? Yeah. Okay, so just drop her. If we would have focused on Star Labs and the examination of Fort Line, we could have seen another cool action sequence of Fort Line escaping, more on the villain's plans. But no, we're focusing on Jay, the pink-haired activist. I don't get it. I don't get it. It, it. it took me out of the escapism that they set up in the previous pages. I don't, I don't know why this is, why, why these writers, these comic creators are so politically obsessed. 
If you care so much about politics and the state of the world, get into politics. Stop writing comics or write original political IPs. I'm pretty sure if you're a talented writer, DC will give you a, a, a book of your own where you can create a new city within a DC universe, your new heroes, and have all the political commentary that you want. I all or that but when you're stopping the development of one character to do something with a pink haired activist and and and, and 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 one more thing it's such a it's just it's so blatantly obvious that it's an activist or it's a self insert why do they always got to have pink and purple hair I, I i don't i i don't i don't get that man why is it always short pink purple hair some of you activists, I don't know, man. Y'all got to explain that one to me, but it it, it it took me out. Very, very disappointing. Um, I'm still going to recommend it because I want people to see that first action sequence because it's brilliantly drawn and the ending conversation. If you, could, I, if you could just read the first couple of sequences and then skip the whole activism nonsense and then go to the end where he has this great conversation with John about what it means to be Superman and... and Superman putting his hopes in him because John went to the future and he saw that what's going to happen to Superman if he makes this trip. I mean, there's so much stuff they could have focused on. That's where the disappointment comes in. You have the relationship between John and Superman to focus on. John don't wanting his father to go because he knows his father's not going to come back because he's been to the future. He sees his fate. And Superman being Superman says, if that's my fate, then let it be. I would have liked to see more scenes of that, but we have Jay here to ruin everything. Him fanboying over Lois Lane. being all, It's just like, get this character out of here. You're ruining the story. You have Fortline who's been introduced, who can control, who can adapt to Earth's density. These are things comic book readers want to see. Not this. Like, what's the point? Superman was a refugee. My grandparents put them in their only ship, sent them on a dangerous voyage. Superman was a refugee, but no one knew Superman was an alien until he made it known. Otherwise, everybody thought he was human. Duh. So you couldn't even get that right. It wasn't only until Superman revealed himself that people were afraid of him. If he never revealed himself, everybody would have just thought he was just a regular Caucasian man from Kansas. <sighs> this has to stop, folks. This, 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 this lack of escapism, this, these self-inserts, it has to stop. King Spawn is selling so many well. Spawn is selling well because it's just focusing on its universe. It's focusing on the characters that, that Tom McFarlane knows his audience. Manga is selling well because it knows its audience. Why are Marvel and DC not knowing their majority audience is still the core audience that brought this shit in the 80s, 70s, and, and 90s, and early 2000s? Not the Tumblr crowd. Not the Twitter crowd. They don't buy shit. This is why your sales tank. You used to be pulling in half a mil on your books. Now you can barely scratch 5,000, 10,000 because of shit like this. Anyway, that's, that's my review slash rant. I mean... Hopefully, well, I'm going to review some more stuff because I, I got to get the, the taste out of my mouth with this one. Very disappointing, but I'm still going to say read it because of because you got to see what I'm talking about. That's the very reason why I was going to give this a skip it. But you have to see what I'm talking about when I mean like you establish Fort Line and then you just go straight to this activism shit. Um, you got to see it for yourself. Um, I'm not even going to do an outro. You already know, like, share, subscribe. Later days. I'm going to catch you on the next one. Peace.